What's up, y'all? Silent Mike back with another video. New videos every Monday and Thursday. Be sure to subscribe, hang out. I'm taking all of your questions from the comments below, topics you want me to cover, things I can help you with. That, things I can help you with. And this latest one is something I've covered a long time ago, and I it, it's it, it's a common topic when you get into powerlifting or once you really find the strength conditioning world, the high bar squat versus the low bar squat. What's going on? What's the difference? Why why should I use one? And and I know everyone wants me just to give an answer like other people because when you are black and white on the internet. People love it. Carnivore's good. Carbs are bad. Don't eat your veggies. Only eat veggies. Only eat bananas. High bar squats are shit. Only low bar squat. Well, I'm not gonna give you that answer because it does depend on you, your goals, your morphology, your leverages, how you're built, and also what you enjoy. So let me give you some examples, right? The high bar squat and low bar squat there are some mechanical difference, although everyone's squat's gonna look a little bit different. Stereotypically, a high bar squat, you do place the barbell a little bit higher on your traps. It's still not necessarily on your neck on your traps, it's more kinda in the meat of your traps. And then stereotypically, you squat a little bit more vertical, your torso's a little bit more vertical, and your knees will go a little bit more forward. Um, the textbook low bar squat, the bar's much lower on your back, resting kind of on your rear delt, so maybe even six inches. Again, it will look different depending on the individual. Uh, you lean a little bit more forward, you're squatting a little bit more with your hips, and that's typically more a little powerlifting squat. Um, it all depends, again, on how you're built and how you move, because I can put the bar position on my back quite low and still stay pretty vertical and get my knees forward. Uh, it, it all kind of depends, right? Because I have pretty stumpy femurs, my thigh bone is stumpy, so I can hit depth pretty easy, and that's just how I'm gonna look. So how I look when I squat and what I'm trying to do or what's most efficient for me may be different for you. When and why would you use different ones now? You can argue some of these things are you know, hearsay or don't matter as much. Again, if you enjoy a certain way or one way feels a little bit better, I suggest sticking with that. If your goal is purely powerlifting, often, not always, but often a lower bar position will allow you to lift a little bit more weight in the long term. I do think it's a little bit more efficient. It allows you to stay tighter. It allows you to keep that barbell over your midfoot and also keep a groove, keeping a straight bar path. Is it always the case? No. There's a lot of very strong guys that squat with a little bit higher bar position. My guy Bryce Lewis, one of the best power lifters uh, in the world in the 231 weight class um, for the USAPL and IPF. He puts the bar quite high. His knees go way more forward and he's more vertical, more of the stereotypical uh, high bar squat. What's gonna work for you if you're a weightlifter? Now, there's a lot of arguments in this that low bar squats make no sense because weightlifting has to stay more upright and this and that. That argument doesn't hold a lot of validation with me because in weightlifting itself, Olympic weightlifting, you never have the bar on your back to begin with, so what's the difference between a high bar and low bar to them? They're both not that specific. A front squat would be obviously more specific or overhead squat. So I think if you're going that down that road, and I'm no weightlifting coach, but I think there's a lot of arguments to be made. But what I do understand is that quad strength is very very important for Olympic weightlifting and they often use the front squat, belt squat, or a higher bar squat, a more typical weightlifting squat where your torso is way vertical and knees are going forward to build up the quads. And I understand that, but I do think you could put the bar a little bit lower, maybe handle more poundages, push your knees forward. That's neither here nor there, that's just my opinion. Um, another reason um, for other sports, again, it may depend, a lot of team sport athletes, basketball players, football players, they tend to a little bit be, uh, tall, be a little bit taller. And so for me as a strength coach, I'll analyze how they move, if they have any injuries, Injuries, et cetera, et cetera. But I often box squat or even do a Bulgarian split squats with some of those athletes. Um, the squat is a technical lift. No, it's not as technical as the snatch or some of these other exercises, but to do a proper squat, staying safe and allow yourself to progressively overload it, um, it does take some coordination. It is a little bit more difficult when you're taller or bigger or just a less coordinated human being. Now, I think for the majority of you who maybe want a competitive power lift, maybe want a body build, but overall just love lifting weights, want to look a little bit better, get a little bit stronger, I suggest to you is put the bar wherever it's most comfortable. Um, once you start squatting for a little bit longer period of time, years, uh, for sure months, but maybe even years, you can start to adjust around and make small adjustments where you place the bar, how tight you squeeze your back, and the bigger your back gets, the stronger you get overall, the more muscle you build, the more comfortable it does get um, putting it a little bit lower. Uh, again, it all depends on the individual, what the goals are, and what I would you know, see as a coach or where I'd put the bar, because there's also a lot of athletes that put the bar way too low on their back, um, and it actually pushes them out of place or forces their torso to move uh, that the, the, the angle 
of their torso in the squat to move drastically, which isn't efficient either. We want whatever angle we have, even if we're low bar squatting, and this is my upper body, and you may have some lean with the low bar, we want that angle to remain the same throughout the motion, rather than if we go into the hole, we don't want our hips to shoot up or at that angle to get more drastic as we try to ascend in the lift. Do you even have to squat? We cover that in another video. You don't necessarily have to squat either. There's Bulgarian split squats. There's different specialty squat bars, the safety squat bar, um, a, 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 a buffalo bar that's kind of bent over your, your neck, uh, lunges, uh, belt squats and a great option. It's a little bit more rare in gyms, but there's a bunch of different ways to build up your legs depending on your goals, what you need, your morphology, uh, and, and, and what you can handle and what you have fun with because what we need to stick to is what we have fun with. So just a little recap of the high bar versus a low bar squat. Leave your comments below what you want me to cover in the next one. I appreciate you guys. Sound the mic. I'm out of here.